So why? Why suddenly this increase in moth population? Well, this is the springtime assault, I guess, of them. They've been sort of fairly dormant over the winter, and yeah. now they're just emerging as adults. So that's yeah. the time we start to sort of see them flitting around in their houses. Is it worse this year than before? Um, I don't have the data myself, but uh, it's uh, certainly, I think, the warmer weather that we've been experiencing sort of brings them out in, in, in numbers, you know, from the crevices and cracks and wardrobes. And, and it's not places. all moths that eat your clothes? Absolutely not. I say 2,500 species in the UK, and it's only one group, and it's only really four species that we find in our house, and they're not classically big flappy moths. They are tiny moths, about six or seven millimetres. So can we see what it is that we're meant to be looking for? Yes, we've got sort of in tubes down here, if the cameras can pick them up, we've got, um, in the first tube, we've got the common clothes moth. Um, and this is one that is flitting around a studio here today. Um, we've seen several in the green room, which was quite nice. Oh, have you? Um, Came out of my wallet, I think. There we go. <laughs> I thought it was mine. Uh, moving on, we've got the case-bearing clothes moth. And this is the one people more commonly sort of find flapping around their sort of homes. But um, they do disguise themselves a larval stage. They live in the case, um, which we've got the cases there that they live in. And they disguise themselves in this case with the fabrics oh. of the materials that they're eating. So green Why do they eat moth. clothes, then? Um, they're after the keratin. That's the, the product they're after in it. You know, that is their sustenance. That's their, their staple kind of food. They're a group of moths which feed on, on sort of decay, um, fungi and, and, and kind of sort of dead parts of animals and things like that. So we bring those in our homes. It's very natural for them and it's a very natural um, part of the, you know, the insect fauna of our houses. It's, we shouldn't be surprised, um, mm. but we don't want them to get out of so control. So you dress in nylon, they're not going to eat your food? Absolutely your not. No, they won't touch that. So no. is it the larvae or the... It's a larval stage only. So the moths, you know, are innocent in that respect, okay. but of course that's the next generation on its way. So okay. those are the ones you really want to take out of the picture. All right, so what, how do we protect ourselves well, from these? Well, kind of moving over to our, our wardrobe, um, all things you can have throughout the year, really, which are quite a sort of advisable. We've got the, um, the cedar wood products. You can get them in the form of hangers. You can get them in the form of blocks oh, to hang in there. Okay. Why um, don't they like those? Classically, it's, it masks the smells of the clothes that they're after, the sort of the compounds in there somewhat. Oh. And also, it's a not, a, not a particularly nice smell for them. So anything sort of citrusy Carrying. things like that you can use as well. Lavenders classically used to be in there. Lavenders arguably used to be Because mothballs are a bit old-fashioned. They're very old-fashioned. You don't want to be sitting on the train coming into work smelling the mothballs. I did for years on end, but that's <laughs> another story. Um, and then you've got a number of traps that you can use. Um, they have a sort of sticky element on them usually. And, uh, Let's have they, a look at that they one. Often have. So they'll, that they'll just fly onto those and stick and then won't get any further? Yeah, classically. I mean, this is one of my preferred methods. We have pheromone traps. So they use the female pheromone and they attract the males, the male moths moths oh. to it so they get stuck on a sticky pad there that takes them out of the breeding cycle just what you want to do because by the time they're flying around it's too late so although you uh, catch the flyers it they're after them. the female so they're looking around scoping around your home trying to find a sort of tapping on the female what yeah. about shaking your clothes shaking the clothes lots of disturbance that's another great thing you know kind of lots of when you put stuff away when you get it out plenty of sort of shaking imagine you're dancing with the jumper right. there, something like that get Shake rid of it, it. get rid of those um, washing clothes washing clothes we kind of move over to our next station We've got scented candles which can be used just to create that sort of smell in the house well, which might your, confuse so them. In your room where you keep your clothes? Just that, yeah. Even if they're in a wardrobe? Yeah, these, like are, these are ones I, I gather which will have sort of, sort of smells and things again, lavender, things like that, that they right, won't Right, that they just get, don't like the smell of it. OK. And then this time of year, of course, here we are, we've got the moths flitting around and what we want to do is keep them out of our wardrobes and prevent that next generation. So any clothes that you're packing away, your winter clothes, your winter mm -hmm. wool is particularly, plenty of, you know, wash those on a, on a you know, the correct wash, not a hot wash, we don't want to shrink, shrink our clothes. Yeah. Um, but they don't like it. Well, dry cleaning is perfect because that kills all stages, eggs, larvae and any adults that might be lurking there. And then once you've done that, pack them up in these sort of plastic bags. So um, self-sealing plastic bags, you can get back. So your winter bags. woolies in the summertime. Put, put those in there, yeah. So the idea is that what you're packing away is hopefully kind of clean and sterile. Um, I would always favour these pheromone traps because they're going to take the, the, that, those males out, out of the picture. So if you use those year on year, put them near your wardrobe, even in your wardrobe, and that yeah, hopefully that will catch yeah. them. Vacuuming as well. I mean, disturb that wardrobe. Take everything out. You know, disturb those piles. Hoover the cracks and sort of crevices and kind of make sure any moths you see, um, dispatch. And all of these things that you do yourself, I mean, do they work or do you really need to call in the pressure? Um, I'm a great advocate of you can tackle most of these things yourself with common sense. Um, however, if you do build up a, 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 an ongoing problem, and I've seen some quite quite severe ones, mm. then by all means turn to your local pest controller and he'll have, you know, other techniques. And do they just come in and things. spray everything? There is an element of spraying, but again, they also use pheromone traps and things like that, but they'll be able to sort of look around and get into the corners and advise you of the next steps. I, uh, I nearly um, lost a rug once to moths, um, but I sprayed it with fly spray. 
Yep. So is that that, what, that what, again? It's not people don't like. No, using no, that no. In this is the thing a lot of stuff, people but... don't, and this is why you know the pheromone traps and things are great. But sort of turn into those. But the proprietary sprays, insect sprays, basically, they're a pyrethroid um, insecticide mostly, and they're good for for all. You know, the, the, it'll treat fleas, it'll treat moths, it'll treat any kind of sort of thing else, really. Mm -hmm. So certainly, if you you know, if people feel you know willing to do that, do so. But if you don't, then there are non-toxic methods to use as well.